Hi, welcome back again for my next segment back here. Debbie in the dog tub. How about that for all these segments? Because again, unless you can get your dog bathed and cleaned and conditioned properly in the bathtub, give it up. I mean, there's no reason to go any further. So I've got my Facebook community joining me today up here on my little cell phone. And I've got my wider screen down here set up. Let's hope we can get this done. Now, one thing you have to remember is that dogs have a higher body temperature than people. We are 98.6, they are 101. So, I like to bathe all my dogs in cool, well, it's not cold water, but it's not hot. So, if something feels hot to me, I perceive it's gonna feel even hotter to the dog. So, So whatever feels just right for me, and that's on the warm side, like if you're doing a three-year-old child, not the steamy hot showers that we adults do, then I take it a notch cooler for the dogs. And again, I do this off the dog, not on the dog. So the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, a lot of breeds, especially springers, their coats are made in such a way that they are waterproof. So just going like this is not gonna get the dog soaking wet all down to the skin. So what you see me here, I'm actually taking my hands and I am working this water all the way through the top coat, through the feathering to where I'm pretty sure that I've got the hair wet all the way up against the skin. Now, in the last segment, I talked about having my Pantene, and I just use it like this, and I'm gonna put it on her head. I'm gonna wash her head last. If you noticed, I didn't even make her head wet, okay? Uh, Pantene is too oily for the feathering in their ears if you're going to show them. If you're in between shows, you can certainly use the Pantene in their ears. Again, just to keep that coating on the feathering uh, so they don't mat. Pretty easy. So here's our trusty Dawn. So I know this is very basic and elementary for a lot of people that might be watching, but we also have brand new people that would like to learn how to bathe their dogs. Okay. So. Uh, it's not rocket science, it's what I always say. Anybody who has a daughter or their own hair that's long, you know you don't want to take long hair and twirl it around. So just work the shampoo. Now, this is very important. Now watch what I'm going to do with Kira. Kira, turn. 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 Right. So all of my show dogs, I have taught them their whole lives, I can say turn and stand back and like a trick, she will turn herself in the bathtub. So I would start that, the first bath you give a new puppy. I would say, turn, and I would kind of, you know, show them how. I would lead their bodies around so that eventually over time, when you say turn, they just walk themselves around. Oh, Con Con Connor was the star. He, he got tens on that trick. And then, then he used to just think he was, I mean, you know, males. It do, doesn't take a whole lot to entertain a male springer. Right, right. So he just thought that he was just such hot stuff because he just did another trick in the bathtub. Kira, on the other hand, my master hunter who does agility and everything to the top level, <laughs> she could care less and she knows how to walk around a bathtub. <laughs> so, again, just on the front hairs, yeah, on this part, you can give them a nice scrub. Anywhere where there's long hairs, just kind of work it in with your hands. Now, while we're around here, I usually always do this with my right hand, and that's their anal glands. So I'm not sure how to do this with my right hand with all the cameras on my left side. So, and I'm not, left, I'm not ambidextrous. So I think what we'll do is just this. And she's gonna, yeah, you're gonna love me for this one, aren't you? No, can't do it that way. Yeah, don't have a, okay. So. I'm going to have to restation the cameras, and she's going to think, what the hell are you doing? Anyway, so 
we all know that there's the anus of the dog. There it is. Okay. All of this, if you just take your fingers in there and go push, push, push around, it's all just soft tissue. And quite honestly, there is no way to hurt your dog when you go, go to do anal glands. I think the main problem that people have with anal glands is they think, oh, I'm hurting the dog. So they really don't kind of, it, it's so similar to kneading the milk out of, uh, out of a cow teat. They, you, you, you start at the top and then you work it down into the teats. And that's exactly what you want to do. Inside here, on the two opposite sides of this anus are little round sacs filled with anal fluid. Serves two purposes. Number one, when they go potty, that oil is excreted and goes all over the outside of their anus so their anus doesn't get all dry. It's kind of like having chapstick for your lips but on your butthole forever. So that's the first thing. And number two, yes, predators. There's there, even a wolf out in the wild, any, any, any mammal like this out in the woods, they can still have a predator attack and they will use that anal gland in the exact same way a skunk does. They will excrete that anal gland fluid when they're afraid Everybody's had a dog. Take them to the vet, take them to a dog show, take them to a whole noisy environment they're not used to, and <gasps> suddenly they're squirting their anal glands all over. That is a natural response. It is that it is that prey, flight, flee thing. So when a dog feels anxious or fear or that something's going to attack it and spook, be spooky weird, it is going to spray that anal gland and it is gonna make themselves smell like dead fish or a skunk. And I guess the bottom line is, if you were a predator approaching that dog, would you want to eat something that smelled like that? And my answer would be absolutely no. I can't even stand the smell of anal gland fluid. And when I'm back here, it's like, ugh, when, when I'm quote unquote draining these anal glands. And we've all had the dog jump up on our laps and the anal glands are full and then it squirts and ugh, it's gross. So every time I give my dogs a bath, I do, I, I do the anal glands, right. there's probably no way other than getting that camera right down in here. I might be blocking my Facebook friends, but you can see this on the video later. Anyway, so, so if you go in here like this, I'm going to move this camera around here, you can actually feel the two little round pockets. I can feel them. So what I want to do is I want to go behind them push together and then pull forward. So I want to feel them go behind where they are, then come down and push forward. Now, stop. did you see it? Okay, so she just squirted her anal glands there. See, and come forward. It's unlikely she's going to squirt again because she just had a bath last week. Uh, do not put your head down here to see what you're doing or you'll get a face of that disgusting stuff. So, oh God, I can smell it now. So I immediately rinse it off of me. I immediately rinse it off of them. And I get the Dawn back in there. And most of the time I'm doing this on the full length of my bathtub, which means that I stop everything. And I wash the whole back of this bathtub down because I can still smell it. It is pretty disgusting. So there are the anal glands. My Facebook people, when I upload this onto YouTube and post it, you will be able to see that I got a pretty good shot of how that works. Okay, now, there. Oh, that's the other thing. Shaking. Um, there's two, two schools of thought about dog shaking in the bathtub. Number one, we don't want to get wet. All right, but if you notice, I, I have a bathing smock on. I'm going to have to like, use a bathing smock. Right, number one. Uh, number two, Kira is 12 years old. She does, she was in a bad car accident with me and ever since then she's never been well as far as being adjusted in her neck and shoulders. I take her like every th three months to get chiropractor and acupuncture and lasers and everything done on her. So when she shakes, I let her shake. I don't care what the circumstances are. When a dog shakes, they are actually putting their body back into alignment. Now, in the bathtub, they're obviously shaking to get the water off. I understand. Now, one trick is to stop them from shaking. If you hold a dog's head, they're never going to shake in the bathtub. If you hold their head, they're never going to shake in the bathtub. 
And if you see a dog starting to shake, if you can simply, and I don't want to say grab, because you never want to get grabby with any dog, but if you simply take their head and say, no shake, or no. You always want to command a dog with one or two syllable sentences. So it's no or no shake. Then after a while, they'll understand that they're not supposed to shake in the bathtub. But I can tell you, at the very end of the bath, well, we'll get to that. I don't want to jump out of myself. All right. So, again, I'm going to turn the water back on, not on the dog, but against the side of the tub until I'm sure that I have the right temperature. Okay. Okay. And, of course, you never, never, never want to get water down down into the ear canal. If you're a beginner, it doesn't hurt to take cotton balls and put cotton balls into the dog's ear canal. Why not? Just remember at the end of the bath to take them out. Because I remember one dog I was doing that with as quote unquote a display model for a new girl that was starting to work for me. And I put the cotton balls in the dog's ear, which I never do, but I did it for her to show her what to do. And about two days later, the dog's up on my lap, and I go to rub its ears, and the cotton balls were still in there. That's probably not a good thing. <laughs> so, if you are going to use cotton balls when you bathe your dog, just to make sure you don't get any water down their ears, just make sure you get it out. Okay. Turn. Turn. There's that. Nice little trick again. Okay, a lot of times I usually, well, I usually don't have to even have them turn around. Depends on the size of the dog. Connor, I had to have him turn around. He was, he was a nice big chunky dog. Probably could have just reached over, gotten everything done. Now the Dawn, you want to make sure any of these shampoo products, I don't care what they are, Unless you guys come up with some organic thingamabob that you'll probably email me about later after this. For the most part, any kind of shampoo product that you want to do should get thoroughly washed out of the coat. All right, now for their face, you don't want shampoo in their eyes and you don't want shampoo in their ears. So put the shampoo on your fingertips. Don't use Dawn straight out of the bottle. You will never get it out of the dog. <laughs> I'm still, even for that technique, I put it on my hand first and then I put it on her face. And again, I'm going to turn the water back on. And where is it going to go? Look at that. I turned it back on. It's way too hot. Hot water got into that pipeline. Okay. Now, Oh, it's still too hot. Now, what I'm going to do is I am actually letting the water cascade over the back of the head. And I am letting water go into her eyes. Do you see that? But I was very careful to get the shampoo off the back of her head first. I mean, I would be doing this like in boom, 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 instantaneous Star Trek speed time but I'm slowing it up for you guys. So yes, at some point I am going to let that water run into her eyes just on the off chance that any dawn got into her eyes. Now I'm sure it's not there. The other thing is she had one little bit of a crusty eye. This is also important. If you're going to bathe the dog that day, don't try to get that crusty eye clean before the bathtub. Uh, especially on pets. I have so many come in with these crusty eyes, but they've had crusty eyes for three weeks before coming to me. Don't ever try to get those crusty eyes off of a dry dog. You're going to pull off the skin and they're going to bleed. Put it in the bathtub and just keep hitting those crusty areas with warm water, warm water, warm water, and that will melt all that crust away. I've never had a dog yet that I couldn't melt it off of. Not one, and I have some pretty disgusting dogs that come in here, let me tell you. All right, so uh, here is my Pantene. And again, just like, okay? So, and again, I'm not going to waste it on the short hair of the dog. 
Now she is not going in the show ring. So I did put Pantene on the feathering of her ear. I, Pantene is better than Unicure when it comes to keeping, coating the, coating the hair, coating the feather in such a way that it just doesn't tangle in between your bags. Now, another thing is to now top coat. Here's my Unicure. I just love Unicure for top coat. Pantene isn't quite as good for the top coats as the Unicure. Um, and if you feel like you still can smell anal glands, then take some Pantene and just get it all rubbed in there. Now we're going to let that sit on for about two, three minutes. This might be a good time for you to re-top off some shampoos or just hang out and talk with your dog. Now, again, like I said, for her, she's not getting me wet, and anytime she wants to shake is a good thing for me. Now, here's another little cute apparatus that stays in here. This is plastic, and this is just an old junk um, leash. Anyway, I have it up here. You can see the hole in my wall, right? And this is plastic, right? So any dog that I have in the bathtub, if I just put that around it, it just steadies the dog enough that they feel like they have some balance, number one. And number two, if this is on them, like 99% of the time, they're not even going to try to jump out or get out of this bathtub. I don't care how untrained they are. I mean, most dogs come in with a, a collar and th their lead broken. I'm not talking about the real wild ones here, just a normal pet. Right, right. But if you put this around there, then you're not going to have that constant struggle of them trying to get out of the bathtub with you. Now, I, I don't need that for any of my show dogs, so we're just going to put that away. All right, so... I feel like she's had that on. We're going to turn on the water. And what are we going to do? We're going to let the water fall to the back of the bathtub. Until I got it set exactly right. And even then, that hot pipe wants to come through. So, The Unicure, you don't need to go completely crazy about trying to get all of it out of the coat. The Pantene, I feel, I feel more needy to get it all the way out because it does have all those perfume products in it and it definitely has ingredients that I can't pronounce. So. I don't know what it is, but I do know that I don't want it up against my dog's skin. Okay, Kira, turn. Look at that. Good, good, good trick. <laughs> that is one of the best things you can teach your dog in the bathtub. First thing is not to jump out of the bathtub and fight you while you're doing this process. Se second thing is on. And third thing would probably be not to shake during the actual bathing process. But again, if you can sense or feel like your dog is ready to shake, just hold the dog's head and say no, that'll stop him from shaking. Because the shaking starts here and then works back in their body. Right. And unless the dog is wet, if they are shaking just to shake, without water on them, they are shaking to realign their body. So they start at their head and they go back and that realigns everything. So, I am going to take a towel, and just in the direction that the hair grows, I'm not going to be doing any of this stuff, especially with a springer, a show springer in top coat. You never want to work the hair in any kind of unnatural position. Turn, turn, turn. That's a good girl, I know. She's not used to having a bath with the side of this bathtub open, so... She's got her eyeball on this escape ASAP, I'm sure. Okay, so now we have a cream rinsed 
and a clean dry. I do this for all breeds of dogs. I don't care if it's shelf. I mean, if it's a Dalmatian, I don't do it. But all breeds of dogs. From the bathtub, I have a separate set of slickers back here. Actually, this one's from my show tack box, and I shouldn't be using it here. Turn, 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 turn. these these are great for back here in the bathtub they have like this rubber holder I've had I've, th these things are these things will die if you get w water on them all the time and that's like what 20 20 dollars slicker these things are cheap um pet edge cherry brook not pet edge but they have this rubber so when everything's wet and slippery these are the bet and i just leave them back here right so these are these are the ones that i use back here they never go out front and I go through the dog and I quote unquote get all the hairs back down into the natural position. Now that's just the pet. Molly the pet goes on the leash and that was Smokey who just moved that camera. Um, they go back on the leash and then they go out to the, uh, the drawing room where I'll take you here in a minute. Okay and my next segment is going to be show blanketing putting a towel on a springer to get the top fl top coat flat for the show ring. So that's going to be the next segment coming up next. And our actress today is Kira.